two users shouldn't be able to book one single seat in the name of two different users. All right, this is known as concurrency control. And this is the fourth characteristic of the database approach. Hey guys, welcome to our second DBMS tutorial. In today's tutorial, we'll be learning what are the characteristics of database approach. Then we'll look at in detail explanation of each characteristic. All right, let's get started. So first thing, what are the characteristics of database approach? Now there are two approaches, file system approach and database approach. Today we'll be learning about characteristics of database approach. So there are total four characteristics of database approach. First characteristic is called self-describing nature of database system. The second one is called insulation between programs and data and data abstraction. Third one is called support of multiple views of the data. And the final and the fourth one is called sharing of data and multi-user transaction processing. All right. So these are the four characteristics that you need to understand. Now we'll look at them in details one by one. So let's look at the first characteristic, self-describing nature. Okay. Now, what do you mean by self-describing nature? What do you think it means? Okay. Self-describing nature means the database system in DBMS, that is, it does not only contain the database. Okay. The database system does not only contain the database, but also the information about the constraints and the structure of the database. Okay. So it is describing itself, like what is the structure of the database? What are the constraints of the database and so on. So this is called self-describing nature of DBMS. This is the first characteristic. Now, where is this information stored and what is this information called? So the information about constraints and the structure of the database is known as the metadata. Now, where is this metadata stored? Metadata is stored in something called as catalog. Okay. So it is stored in catalog. Now, why is this information stored in catalog? Now you need to understand that a general database system is created not for some specific application, but for general uses. Okay. So when you create something for a general use, the developers of the application or the program or the user needs to know about the structure and the constraints of the database so that they can create the program around it. Okay. Or specifically for it. So hence to get this information about the structure and constraints of the database, they need to reference the metadata. Hence it is stored in the catalog of the database. Now let's look at the second characteristic. The second characteristics of DBMS approach is known as insulation between programs and data and data abstraction. Okay. So what do you mean by insulation between programs and data and data abstraction? So in a file system, what happens is suppose you want to make some change in the file system database, you have to make this change in the entire program, just because you make the change in the database, it won't be reflected in the program. Okay. So what you have to do in the file system is you have to change the entire program based on the change that you do in the database, but it's not the same case in DBMS. In DBMS, suppose you want to add another piece of data that is data type, let's say date of birth or something like that. Okay. All you have to do is go to the catalog and add another data type called date of birth and the whole changes will be reflected in the entire program. You don't have to go and edit the entire program. So what does that mean is by changing the data in the database, the program does not get affected. Okay. So that's why it's called insulation between programs and data and data abstraction. All right. Now let's look at the third characteristic support of multiple views of the data. So before learning the support of what do you mean by support of multiple views, you need to know what are views of the data. So a database has multiple users, of course. Okay. Each user may need different view of the database. Now, what do you mean by view of the database? Suppose there are, there is a database of students information. Okay. Now a student can access the database that is view the database. Okay. And he might get his attendance percentage or he might get his, the scores that he has scored in a subject. Whereas a teacher also has the access to the same database. Okay. Now the teacher wants to get the information about contact details of the parents that are there in the database, but a student cannot get the same information as the teachers. That is a student does not have that privileges that a teacher should have. So there is a different view for a student. There is a different view for the teacher. Another thing that you need to understand that in a view, the information that is there that is, that is shown is either derived from the database or it is stored in the database. So basically let's say 
there is some information like the marks of the students okay now suppose a teacher wants to find what are the what is the average score of the entire class okay out of 100 now she will just ask or query the database for average score of the students she'll get the result out okay now the teacher does not know whether the information is stored in the database or it is derived from the database that is the teacher doesn't know whether the average score of the class is stored in the database or the average score is calculated by the database and then displayed so that is something known as support of multiple views of the data so multiple views means different user will have different view of the data based on the privileges that are there to the user now let's look at the third characteristics sharing of data and multi-user transaction processing all right now sharing of data and multi-user transaction processing what do you mean by that a multi-user dbms as the name suggests has multiple users it must allow multiple users to access and use the database at the same time so it should allow multiple users to use the data at the same time this is a must when multiple applications use a single database to store and integrate in one single database so this is a necessity okay sharing and sharing of data and multi-user transaction processing this is a characteristic that a dbms must have so that it becomes useful for multiple users okay now what do you need okay to do this to achieve this a concurrency control software must be included all right so what do you mean by a concurrency control software okay a concurrency control software is a software that will allow a user to access the data at the same time whereas other user will be able to use the database but not the same data okay once one user commits the changes then only the other person can come and add new changes or edit it okay so this is known as concurrency control now for this you have concurrency control softwares they are also known as oltp okay so why this concurrency control software exists they exist so that whenever a user uses the data it should be correct okay and updated there shouldn't be confusion like right now the data was x after two seconds the data is y which one to choose okay hence once a user commits the changes then only other person can use it this is also known as asset properties that is we'll talk about asset properties afterwards right not right now let's look at an example so that you understand better suppose you are trying to book a ticket on an online ticket booking website for a bus okay this is the seating arrangement for the bus and all seats are available when you go okay now you're like okay fine all seats are available i'll come after five minutes i'll book the ticket after five minutes you come you see some seats have been booked that are there in the red have already been booked now you are like okay fine it's okay i'll book seat number one okay so you select seat number one you'll see seat number one selected at the same time okay someone else also comes online and he wants to book seat number one as well but the system won't allow it the system will show seat one is not available kindly select another seat to that person all right you have not yet completed the booking you have just select the booking okay or you have just selected the seat okay but still the user won't be able to select the same seat as you okay this is known as concurrency control now if you book the ticket it's all fine the seating arrangement will look the same but suppose if you don't book the ticket okay you're like okay fine i'll book the next day's ticket i won't select the seat so you cancel the booking now the seat is again available so after some time depends on the website maybe 15 minutes half an hour the seat is going to be made available again to users for booking now why this exist this exists because two users shouldn't be able to book one single seat in the name of two different users all right this is known as concurrency control and this is the fourth characteristic of the database approach so that's it for today guys thank you very much for watching if you have any queries feel free to ask them in the comment section below if you have any suggestions please write them in the comment section below if you like the video please share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel thank you very much